Good morning, everyone. Welcome. My name is Menachem Creditor. It's my honor to serve as scholar in residence and rabbi for UJA Federation of New York. We bring you Torah and music, blessing and community every weekday. We've been doing so since March 18th, 2020. Today it is Thursday, April 25th, 2024. It's Chol Hamoe, the days between the big holidays of Passover, but it's still Passover, the in-between days. There's a lot to talk about. It's beautiful to be with you. It is broadcast 1040, and it is day 202 since October 7th, since Hamas attacked the state of Israel and Jews all over the world. <clears throat> Obviously, there's a lot to talk about today. What I'd like to do, friends, uh, is greet us as we do every single day, appreciate that we get to be together, learn a little bit of Torah, wish each other a happy Pesach as best as we can, and to build our hearts through this holiday so that we can continue the great work that we do. So Ron, it's good to see you. Penny, thanks for keeping us on track. Carl and Linda, Adrian, Booker, Tov, hi Peter. Good to see you. You were at your first Seder ever this year. Kol HaKavod. So moving, so moving that you, uh, that you came home to all of us. We get to be home with you. What a gift. Fabrice, good afternoon, Tel Aviv. Thank you for being there and here with us. It's good to see you. Lisa and Stacy, Tsiona and Anya, Deborah, good morning. Mordechai, welcome. Uh, let's see. Blair and Diane, Helen and Fran, Boker Tov, Arlene. Arlene, you're in Washington, D.C., awaiting the birth of a grandchild. Bisha'atova. It should happen at a good time. Everything should be blessed for you and for your family. Uh, Dale and Debbie and Debbie, Barry and Chana Boker Tov, Natalia and Cecile, Minna and Deborah, good morning. Hi, Masi, exiting left Poland. Richard, Mohawk Assembly of God, welcome, friends. Bless you all. Robin, good morning. Amy and Judy, Marilyn, good morning. Hi, Barry, good to see you. Andrew, Chag Sameach. All right, friends, let's take a breath. Kim, beautiful to see you here. Hi, Ron, Amy, Pokertov. Hi, Michelle. Let's take a breath, sing a blessing, learn some Torah. see all of you. I truly hope that your seders were powerful, were meaningful, that you were able not just to do the seders, but to feel the seders, reflecting just personally. I was surprised that it worked. I know that I've been teaching nonstop the last number of weeks, that the seder is bigger than the pain of the moment, and that hope is not only mandatory, as Fran is quoting, a very powerful human being 
as teaching us, demanding of all of us for the last 202 days. But I was surprised. I was surprised that the language of Seder was so piercing and effective. I have more admiration and reverence for the sages of the past for using the technology of the Seder to tell the story moving forward. And then yesterday, yesterday, we could see the face of a young man named Hirsch Goldberg Polin. And yes, the video that contained his beautiful face was a propaganda video created by Hamas. But Hirsch is alive. And his parents spoke to the universe as they have been screaming to the universe every second of the last 202 days telling him one message. They spoke to the leaders of all the parties involved in the negotiation for the release of the hostages from Hamas's clutches in Gaza to make the deal now. And then they said, Hirsch, if you can hear us. Hirsch, if you can hear us. We love you. Be strong. Survive. Never have I seen such love, friends, from Rachel and John, and from every parent and grandparent and sister and brother and cousin and grandparent and grandchild of every hostage. We are not going to stop screaming for their release. We are not going to let anything distract us from the task at hand, not even campuses of American universities on fire filled with ignorance and hatred and anti-Semitism. I'm a graduate of Columbia University and I am ashamed of my alma mater. Ashamed. I'm assuming you've been tracking the stories and just yesterday at University of Texas, 34 people were also arrested. But I will not be distracted by the terrible pyrotechnics and failure of leadership on countless university campuses, including Yale, and Harvard, and Columbia, University of Texas, University of California, Berkeley, right where I used to live, I will not, and we cannot, be distracted by this. We cannot. We have to stand and champion our students. UJA is present in a profound way to protect all of our Jewish students who should not need protecting. The images of Jews not being allowed onto campus at Columbia evokes images of Jews not being allowed to universities in Berlin. The language being used is horrific, and all of it is a propaganda tool of Hamas, which is winning the public media war. And so we cannot be distracted. We cannot feel the gaslighting take hold of our souls. Jews not allowed onto campus, you might think, and the protesters, I've never used the phrase useful idiots before, but I really do feel like using it. Jews, young Jews, who somehow have forgotten their own souls and clearly don't know history, nor are the facts, participating in these protests, I'm not sure what our response should be to them. But boy, have some of them failed our ancestors. So I'm going to continue speaking my heart, and I hope that it lands well. If I misspeak or overstate, please know that it is my own severe pain, especially because the New York Times story about these satyrs that happened at Columbia amidst hate these satyrs, satyrs, led by ignorance and hatred, dared use a song that I wrote as their close. And then at Yale, the same thing. My pain in that way is so small compared to the real pain that's out there. But the language of satyr, of course, of course, 
is meant to be a declaration of human dignity and rights. Has the world forgotten that on October 7th, 1,200 plus human beings, images of God, Israelis, were murdered? I think the world has forgotten that. Have they forgotten, pardon me for being so bearing right now, it's been a while since I've gotten this detailed, but we need reminding that they blew off Hirsch's arm after blowing up his friends, that they attacked, Hamas breached an international border and attacked young people at a music festival, slaughtering them, violating kibbutzim, violating families, violating women, dragging more than 230 human beings into captivity where sexual assault and rape and torture, denial of medicine, denial of sunshine, denial of access to the International Red Cross. The world has forgotten. And the accusations the accusations of genocide not only ring hollow, they are blasphemy against truth. Not only was genocide coined as a term because of the genocide of Jews during the Shoah, during the Holocaust, but we, we're doing our best. I ask anyone in the world any nation in the world, any nation, what would you do if terrorists came and stole your grandparents, if terrorists came and stole your babies? And what would your response be to young people protesting, too scared to even show their faces, comparing themselves to the anti-war movements during the Vietnam War? They were protesting against the drafting of civilians for a war that was unjust and unwinnable. They were protesting an idea. There was an agreement about facts. How dare they make this comparison? Embodying the worst, the worst of humanity and claiming that it's noble. We are in the middle of Pesach. These days commemorate the days between the exodus from Egypt and getting to the Red Sea. On the seventh day of Pesach, which we're not at yet, we commemorate the splitting of the sea. And I'm shaking my fist at heaven. I know I'm talking to human beings using this technology of this day, but I'm shaking my fist at heavens because this sea must split too. As Kim is saying, I hope that many of us who are in New York will make it a point to see the Nova exhibit. It is incredibly painful, incredibly important. UJA has been involved in its being brought to New York, its prominence and its safety. I hope that you will step forward and you will crunch your matzah and sing our songs. And as Sarah just said, be louder. I know we're in the middle of a Chag. I know we're in the middle of a Chag. But we are in the middle of a historic message. And if you are not paying attention to what's happening in Israel, please go to the Times of Israel and read. It happens to be, my daughter is in Jerusalem right now. She had Seder with my family in Tel Aviv. I'm so jealous. I miss her so much. And I wanted to be there with her. The protests happening in Israel against the government are also important to pay attention to. Because what we also cannot forget is that on October 7th, the government of Israel failed the people of Israel. And the army of Israel failed the people of Israel. The army has showed up since and has 
become itself again? That's not a question. For all the complexity of waging war, thank God for the young women and men who wear the, the uniforms of Tzahal, of the IDF. But the government of Israel, the government of Israel has not become the government of Israel again yet. I support our homeland unconditionally. I support our children on campuses unconditionally, as you must too. You must show up. You must demand if you are involved as a donor, as a leader, as an alumnus, alumna of any of these universities. Raise your voices. Raise your voices. There is no time for neutrality, and it is not the time to be quiet. It's a fascinating thing. I was considering the song Dayenu. I know I spoke about this before Chag began. Dayenu is a song that says, it would have been enough. It would have been enough, God, we say. Ilu hotzianu mi If you took us out of Egypt, velo karalanu et hayam, and didn't split the sea. Really? Right now, friends, you and I are between Exodus and the sea. What if you didn't know the sea split? Would you say Dayenu to that? It would have been enough, God. Just take us out of Egypt, but don't save us. No. We created the state of Israel. The Jewish people created our homeland. We are the only people in history to successfully, to successfully decolonize our home after it was taken from us. The accusation of colonizing is only made by people who have no concept of history and the indigenous place of Jews in our home. This is a time, as Richard just said, for choosing. Now, there is no sidelines, not in Tel Aviv, not in Jerusalem, not at University of Texas, not at Columbia, not in the halls of Congress, thank God for the passing of foreign aid to bolster Ukraine's right to protect itself, which if it hadn't been 202 days of tribal trauma, we would still be focusing on, and somehow we are still focusing on, but also support for Israel. Thank God for the work Israel has done to intensify the humanitarian aid in Gaza, because what happens next in Gaza matters quite a lot, and human beings living in Gaza, civilians living in Gaza, deserve the human dignity that we demand for ourselves too. And so what I want to say, and I've been saying over and over, and I guess I'm just going to keep on saying it, and I hope it sounds like Torah to you, is that it is not Dayenu yet. It is not enough yet. Jews are human, and no one should have needed to remind the world. The International Red Cross has never seen the hostages. And the only time we've seen our beloved hostages' faces alive is through a propaganda tool used to discourage our hearts. Well, it didn't work. It didn't work. Thank God Hirsch is alive. Please, God, may the rest of the hostages be alive. May we receive them with all the tender care that they need. May the world be woken up. And I don't mean to say that in some passive way, friends. You and I, we are called right now to wake up the world. When we first began these broadcasts after October 7th, I quoted Rachel Goldberg, Hirsch's mother, who I was overwhelmed and privileged to sit next to just two weeks after October 7th. And she told us we needed to start a mosquito campaign where we just kept on biting, little bites, to keep elected officials' attentions, to keep our community's attentions. Well, it seems like the world is making sure we pay attention. So let's show up, not as mosquitoes, but as tigers, as lions of Judah, as Jews, loud and proud, for our children on campuses, for our family in harm's way, for our people wherever they are around the world. 
this is not a great moment of Jewish history, but we are great Jews in this moment of history. We're not going to become less human. We believe in the empathy and compassion of removing drops of wine from our cups of liberation because even those who hurt us should wake up and remember to be human. We are called to show compassion and empathy because God has told us that. Since day one, literally day one, the Torah's original concern is all of humanity. The Torah does not begin with a Jewish journey. It begins with a human journey. I do not show up only in defense of my tribe. That wouldn't be enough either. But I must show up for my tribe. Because as the great Elie Wiesel of blessed memory said, when asked by a student at Boston University when, when Elie Wiesel was a professor there, the student said there's an anti-apartheid in South Africa march on Sunday, the same day that there is uh, a march in solidarity with Soviet Jewry, because Soviet Jews aren't being allowed to leave, and that was the Haggadah of my childhood, in solidarity with Soviet Jewry, created by the Rabbinical Assembly. These are our people walking through those waters. When Elie Wiesel was asked, which one should I go to, the anti-apartheid in South Africa march or the march in solidarity with Soviet Jewry, he said, of course, you should go to both. You must go to both. But the reason why you have to go to the march in solidarity with Soviet Jewry is because if you don't go to the march in solidarity with Soviet Jewry, who will go? Who will go to the march in solidarity with Soviet Jewry? Friends, shout. Be strong, be resolute, let this holiday fill our souls. Let the absence of chametz, of yeast, remind us that we're not doing this with puffed up chests, but let the story remind us that we are doing it with strong bodies and resolute souls. You and I. Aniv ata nishane et ha'olam is the great Arik Einstein wrote. You and I will change the world, and we must, for our children's sake. Let's sing HaTikva. It's not enough, and it's not going to be enough until HaTikva sounds like a mirror of our reality. Until we could actually stand at the other side of the sea, and all know that the dignity that we and our children and our grandparents deserve isn't something we have to fight for. It's something that is understood. We sing Hatikva and we say, Od lo avda tikva tenu. We still haven't lost our hope, despite it all. And I look at Rachel, Rachel Goldberg and Jonathan Polin. And I know what Hatikva means. I know what love means. So let's sing, let's pray, let's act, let's shout, let's defend our Jewish students, let's stand up for humanity, let's build this world faster than anyone can take it down. I hope the rest of your Pesach is meaningful. I hope for the miracle of Miriam the prophet and Elijah the prophet waiting at our doors the second we're done with this broadcast. Maybe they're there right now. Or maybe when we go to open our doors, we'll realize we are Miriam and Elijah for our children's days. We are called to tell them that tomorrow is going to be better because we are going to make it better in their names. So sing with me, friends. Sing. Find the courage to sing. Kolon baleva penima nefesh Yehudi homia ulefate mizrach kadima ayin letzion sofia. 
עוד לא עבדה תקוותנו. התקווה בת שנות אלפיים. להיות עם חופשי בארצנו, ארץ ציון וירושלים. להיות עם חופשי בארצנו, ארץ ציון וירושלים. Bring them home now. Am Yisrael Chai. See you tomorrow, friends. Chag Sameach.